All right, Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mopar Joe. We're back on the 440 that I call the every man's build. It's going in a 69 RTSE rotisserie restored charger for a buddy of mine. So the plan for today is get the camshaft put in and degreed. So that means also I'll need to get a uh, single rod put on, rod and piston assembly for number one, to be able to check that. Also, that'll be able to give me my compression height and then we'll kind of know, uh, I hadn't even bought head gaskets for this yet. So let me show you what the cam card looks like. Here is our camshaft. Hydraulic roller from Urson. It is a copper core, special notes. It can take a bronze or melanized gear. We got a melanized because this is mostly a street driven car. He wants it to last longer. Um, and here's the specs. So 112 plus two. There's a grind number. 548, 548, 298-302. Uh, if you want duration at 50, it is 238 and 242. So this thing is like very, 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 very similar to the camshaft that I had in my 400. I think the only difference is uh, mine was a 110 lobe separation and uh, duration at 50 was 236, 242. So two more degrees of intake duration there. But I think they're going to be very similar. That 112 plus two will make this a little more streetable, which is kind of what it's what it's meant for. So may change our dyno curve some. That'll be exciting to see. But they really do a nice job on their packaging here. I like that box. I'll have to keep that for some. But here is our camshaft. I'm going to get my special cam handle out that I was sent by a viewer on the channel. And we'll get this thing put in. I got to clean this thing up. That's got some funk on there. It looks kind of nasty. But clean it up all the way. Get that uh, rust preventative off or whatever it is. Then we can go in with it. The journals themselves in here, cam bearings, I have oil run that ran down from putting the crank in, my Lucas 50-50 mix. And I'm going to probably spin this, flip this thing over. A lot of guys put the cam in first. I understand you can if you want to. But I wanted to get my crank in. So flip it over. Let's get it in. You'll notice this camshaft has two holes in that journal. And a groove. So I have cleaned out the holes, be sure they connected. And I have a video of Mr. Rick Seaman where we drilled a billet cam core because it didn't have any holes in it. Isn't that fun? It was a blast. Here we go. I got my assembly lube on the journals. And let me try to do this without making a close. I like that cam handle just for that. Nah. When I get to the back, I like to go ahead and start spinning as it goes in. And she's butter. Got us some fine cloys performance product. Coming in. Street billet. True roller. There's a part number made in USA. And I went ahead and popped the, I believe it's a Torrington bearing out. Uh, went ahead and lubed. You can see this kit's from uh, August of 21. It's good they date code their stuff like that. I went ahead and popped that one out. And you can see how lubed it is. You have to put it on. See my stickiness. I submerged it inside of that stuff, rolled it around so it could get all the little bearings 
I don't know if I can lean it to where you can see them. It's got a lot of little bearings in there. I wanted to get it well lubed before it goes on. So I just grabbed some of my uh, cam bolts from over there. It said it's a true roller timing chain. It's new in the package. I had to wash both these gears and my parts washer and then with some brake clean to get all the kind of just old black nasty off of them from whatever manufacturing or something. So they're good to go. You can see our keyways here. Go retard or advance eight. And I've got the engine uh, pretty well where it should slide on. Got my plug in the front here and plug from the bottom there. If you don't put those on, you put your cam on. I mean, you're, uh, you put your timing set on, you're gonna have a problem and maybe forget it. So let me get this slid on with the chain and we can keep moving on our process. I have a video out there showing how bad off the degrees can be on your cam, your cam timing can be with a cam set or a with a timing set that was matched. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's got several thousand views on it. I was really excited about that. So thank you if you've seen it already. All right. And here we go. There's our other dot. Got my cam socket on here. You can screw the wheel on too. I might have to loosen it up. You see how easy we're rolling right now. If you need that part number, because you want to buy one for your big block Mopar, which it works on small blocks as well, comp 4799. I just use a Summit degreeing wheel. And right now, I have my dots lined up, best I can tell. But I'm not going to trust that. I will trust the wheel itself. But that means I have to put a piston in, so let's get to it. Our degree wheel is on. And I got my pointer down here. I went ahead and got my fancy homemade piston stop on. I'm not gonna tell you compression height yet. We may save that for the next video. I'm on zero here. Hopefully you can see that. Found my top dead center, set my wheel. I am at max lobe lift on my dial, you'll see it. I've already zeroed it. There's going down. Here's coming back up, right, right, right. There, see how it's not moving? Because we're there. Step one, we're gonna go backwards, rotate the engine backwards to about 100,000. This, this part doesn't actually matter. You can go past, it's fine. Now we're coming up to that 50. This is crucially important to stop right on the 50 intake center line method here. Right there. Right there. So the way I'm going to do this so everybody can be happy, I'm going to touch it to the wheel. I'm calling that 68. Here's my angle if you'd like it. 68. Set her back down. We're going to keep growing the normal engine rotation to where we hit our zero. Now we're coming back to the 50. Almost. Oh, went past it. Dang it. I'll go back up to the zero. That's fine. Now we're coming up to our 50. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Right there. Touch her down. 152. So we do our math. 152 and 68. It's real simple. We get our 220, divide it by two. That's 110. Guess what our sheet said? 110. 
So we like our 110. And something kind of fun with this wheel is if we watch our lifter as I spin it over and we get back to max lift. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right there. It tells you intake center line here. I'm going to pull my pointer over, but 110. There we go. I think she'll make for a fine running 440, just like that. I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll catch you next time. I want to check the end play on our current shaft. I had a lot of people upset I didn't show that in the last video, so I will do it uh, so everybody in the world can see it. And I don't mind. I already have the stuff here. My crank socket is firmly mounted on the crank. I'm not going to take it off to show y'all. But I've got my screwdriver. I will pry to the rearward, rearward, show you my zero on our gauge. When it relaxes, there we go. There you go. So I'm prying backwards. When I released, it went to about four and a quarter. And I can pry forward. Not hard. I'm looking at about seven and a half. I think that's great. Especially for a crankshaft that was made back in the 60s. So she's looking nice.